If you've played a lot of games, I'm sure you know the feeling where you just click with the mechanics and can't wait for the next challenge that comes your way, only to realize that you've just exhausted all the content in the game. So where do you go from there? Well, the speedrunning community responds to that question with... Do it faster. Alright then, but which game do I start with? This summer, I had a lot more time on my hands than I expected, and now finally have a PC that can actually run modern games. So the natural thing to do was, of course, ignore it and play a game that I already own on an obsolete console. No, not that one. This one. Shovel Knight. King of Cards. Want to know how to actually do this stuff? Then you're in the right place. Now you're probably thinking, King of Cards? Do you really speedrun a game that makes you play cards? Well, this is the extent of the card playing that I do in the game. Yeah, so what's this game really about? Shovel Knight is a three button game. You can jump, attack, and use a sub weapon. Let's see what happens when we tell King Knight to go to the right. Oh my god, that's so slow. Let's try attacking then. Nice. And he stops. Great. That's not a problem though, since we can cancel it. You have quite a few options. First, you've got your grounded jump. Pretty self-explanatory. You can jump in any direction you want, and you can bash again, or use an item as soon as you're airborne. Your second option is to turn around. Overshot a little. Started your jump way too far back. Want to make it onto one of this game's many one-tile platforms over death pits? No worries, you're fine. Your third option is to collide with something. This is your most basic way of dealing damage. You gain height and go into a spin state that damages enemies and lets you bounce off the top of objects. This is the intended way to approach most of this game's challenges. There's just one problem. It is really slow. But that's where the next option comes in. Rolling. Everything with 1 HP just melts. It shrinks your collision box. It keeps you moving forward even after your bash would have ended. Is there anything this move can't do? Oh, I got it! Oh my god! Well, it can't be cancelled. First you bash. Then, press jump and bash at the same time. This keeps you from having to wait through his really slow air acceleration. After that, roll out of your aerial bash and you can repeat the process. You're not just mindlessly mashing some faster button. You actually have control over every step of the process. After the first grounded bash, you choose when to jump, and after the aerial bash, you choose when to roll. Different bash and roll timings are useful in different situations. It's not like you have to memorize every bash timing in the game, though. After a few minutes of playing, it just becomes intuitive. You don't believe me? Well, look at the screen. These green platforms disappear when you leave them, and that's all you have for most of the screen. And a lot of these platforms you have to land on are one tile wide. You call that fair? Yes, actually. Since you have a lot of control in the air, if you're good at moving your character, this all flows really well. And sure, that probably sounds like something only a speedrunner who's already good at the game would say, until you realize that this is the first level of World 2. Yeah. Casual players are expected to make it through this stuff really early in the game, and they do it just fine. Now imagine doing something like this in a game like Hollow Knight. The knight also has an air dash. What can you do out of it? Well, you can cancel it into jump. Nope. Attack? Nope. Turn around? Nope. Heal? No. Nope. Do one of the many charge bolt? Yes, actually. But only one of them. That I unlocked 20 hours into my first playthrough. Until then, nope, you get nothing. Let's just say there is a reason why the vast majority of challenging platforming in the game is optional side content. King of Cards, on the other hand, was built around platforming. Its movement is much more fluid, allowing for better improvisation. This becomes much more apparent when you start adding to your moveset with... 
The second to last stage of the first world gives you access to the turncoat. They kind of just hand you an invincibility item really early on. Some of the game's bosses like to projectile spam. With this item, it doesn't matter. Everything they send your way goes right back into their face. You know those enemies other knights usually have to reverse damage boost through? Well, with turncoat, you can just roll right through them. You can also do these rolls right after a jump. And of course, you still maintain full invincibility. You even have some invincibility after letting go of the coat. This makes it possible to do stuff like stand on spikes. Oh, and by the way, you can do it out of a bash. And out of a spin. If you do it frame perfect, you can even cancel your bounce animation. This thing is awesome. But wait, there's still one more thing. Right after beating the first world, you get access to the armor shop. Here you can buy the battery burgundine. It lets you charge a bash in four directions. Your slow spin isn't your only option for getting height anymore. It also lets you interact with some objects in some unexpected ways. Now I've got just one question. Can the charge bash be cancelled? Unless you do something like this, you're not gonna jump out of it. You can't turn around mid bash, you can't roll out of any of them, but you can activate turncoat, keep your momentum, and from there, you can start rolling. You actually gain even more height than if you just did the charge bash alone. This opens up a lot of new ways to move through levels. When you're playing the Shovel Knight games, it's important to know that enemies can't do damage to you while you're hitting them. And since bosses in these games usually don't give themselves invincibility, you actually end up playing the game while you're fighting them. You're not always stuck just waiting your turn. King Knight can take advantage of these mechanics by doing things like this. You're going inside of an enemy with an active hitbox, but you don't care since you're doing damage to him. If you have an enemy close to a ceiling, you can do stuff like this. But wait, you say. When I try getting that kill on King Birdier, I get something that looks more like this. What am I doing wrong? To answer that question, we first need to talk about King Knight's spin. Here, King Knight is just spinning to do damage, and it's slow. <laughs> so what should you be doing to make your fight look more like that? Right after you initiate a spin, you can cancel it as a turncoat, you can do a charge bash, and that's about it. Once you bounce off something though, then you have an option of doing a regular bash. This usually isn't that useful though, since bouncing off an object brings you really high in the air. But when you're under a solid ceiling, the next bash will still hit King Birdier and keep him from doing damage to you. By pressing bash in the right rhythm, you can make sure he gets destroyed. You can even practice this on that same checkpoint in the Grand Hall. You can see another example of that here. Oh god. In the low percent categories for King Knight, bosses are hard. Like, really hard. Some of the things they're doing are actually kinda insane. Let's talk about that one in particular. When he goes below 4 health, Spectre Knight starts his transform. When he's finished with it, he gets a full heal. Having to whittle away at that health bar again loses you a lot of time, so you have to hit him for 8 damage in a really short window. You start by doing the quick damage trick I mentioned earlier, but unlike King Birdier, Spectre will keep rising. You'll have to carefully get out from under that platform and continue bashing him on his way up. If you slide off too early, you haven't dealt enough damage to him. If you slide off too late, you can't catch him on the way up. Thankfully, items make this fight a lot easier. With a triple turncoat flame into a few bounces and a final charge bash down, a strat that I was able to learn in about an hour, I still managed to get the kill before he transformed. Spectre Knight is one of six major bosses you're required to fight in King of Hearts. The speedrunning community has gotten really consistent setups for killing all of them. They all take advantage of your items in a really cool way. These strats have turned places that scare every runner into opportunities to look really cool. 
Yeah, I even finished him off with the turn coat so I can actually move the boat Ooh, right. Ooh, that was really good! I like it! You get to leave faster! You can learn all of them in the full speedrun guide on Moomoo's channel. And then you want to time a turn coat so that as you pass through his raised arms, the flame hits his face. As soon as you land, jump and do a low bash so that you hit the bottom of his chin and still manage to bounce off his forehead. So it's a coat, flame hits his face, jump, bash, pogo. King of Cards is a short game, which makes learning how to speedrun a lot easier. After I practiced all the levels, I could comfortably beat the game in under an hour. Top runners are getting times close to 30 minutes. King of Cards also has short levels. They're so short, most of them only need one checkpoint. Levels being short makes practicing each of them much easier. If you wake up one morning and say to yourself, I want to practice that skipping pressure plant, you can just go to one of your completed files, start pressure plants, and within a minute or two, you'll be there. If you look at the world map, you'll also see that there's branching paths. With these, your routing can get really creative. If for some reason you're not comfortable doing the turncoat route, there are always more options out there. Maybe try Moo Moo's route that uses the Scepter of Swiftness. He managed to get a time of under 36 minutes with this route, and that was in the first month of the game's release. I've seen one of the really early runs go with the Vestments of Vigor, which restores your magic when you hit an enemy. They used it with the Scepter and Gyro Boots to get a time under 45 minutes. Another early run used the Lightweight Plate, an armor that actually lets you run. They also used the Propeller Blitzsteed, a long-range projectile, and the Rat Bombardier, which lets you generate something to bash off in the air. They also got a time of under 45 minutes. Both of these routes still have a lot of room for optimization, if you're up to the task. If you want to think up your own cool route, I'd love to see it. And I'm sure the speeder in Discord, like in the description, will be more than willing to help you out. The King of Cards speedrun is glitchless. In a lot of games, optimal speedrun strats involve clipping through walls or out of bounds, mashing your controller obscenely fast, taking advantage of the lack of backward speed caps, and in some cases, all of the above at the same time. Those can be really cool, but they take a while to learn. King of Cards doesn't make you do any of that. Just doing a full casual playthrough of the game will get you really well acquainted with almost all the mechanics of using a speedrun. You'll be able to get down the most advanced movement technique in a matter of minutes. You also have a lot of control over how difficult you want to make your run. There is never going to be a level that you can't complete if you don't want to learn hard tricks. If you're still having trouble, try using the Scepter and the Gyro Boots. They can make some of the hardest parts of the game a lot easier. On the other hand, if you're looking for more of a challenge, you might want to consider trying the strats that are so hard, even the top runners aren't trying them. King of Cards also gives you 4 health from the start a safety net that some games don't give you. Since levels are still just 1 or 2 minutes long, having 3 chances to make mistakes is usually more than you'll need. Bosses are even more lenient about this. They usually have some conveniently placed chicken or apples right before the fights. They even drop health during the fight. Just... don't fall into bits. If you still find yourself taking more hits than you should, that's not a problem either. Right after you finish World 2, you'll have enough money to buy 2 health upgrades. You don't even have to go that far out of your way. I will say, those two extra hearts have helped me a lot during my early runs. If somehow the game is still too hard for you, you can go even further with some cheat codes. Want to ignore all the platforming in the game? Here's a code that'll let you start the game with unlimited use of an overpowered version of the gyro boots. There's a code that makes you not die when you fall down a pit. You can ice skate everywhere with this code. Even better. You can use a chargeable sonic spin dash with this one. You can be huge. Or even huger. You can also share my disappointment in not being able to beat the second stage in the game well like this. If for some reason you actually want to play the card game, there is a cheat code that lets you ignore levels entirely. Speedrun categories where people actually do play justice do exist. Maybe you can get good enough at it to beat my terrible world record. Seriously, four fifths of it is just me dying. You can enter this code to start speedrunning god mode. See, that's how you do the beetle skip. And that's not even a joke. Yeah. People have been doing it with the other knights, and speedruns have gotten surprisingly oh! optimized. Maybe you're intimidated because the game looks hard. It is a pretty hard game. Do this category though. It is absolutely dumb fun. Just don't, like, beat my record, okay? <laughs> or do. I don't know, maybe you're good at the game. 
The Shovel Knight speedrunning community just wants you to play in the way that makes you have the most fun. The best part about 420 Green Coins God Mode is that you don't have to spend any of them. I don't have to spend any of them. So I'm gonna finish with 420. So if you've watched this long, there's a good chance you want to start playing the game now. It's on everything. PS3, PS4, PlayStation Vita, Xbox One, 3DS, Wii U, Nintendo Switch, Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and of course, Amazon Fire TV. Whichever version of the game you play, you'll still be able to be competitive with the world records. So what's your excuse? Just buy the game and start playing. <laughs> you take that. Why you with Dad. Play? All right, go on, Dad. This go on, is guys. literally the God Run. Good night. Literally the God Run. <laughs> if you don't believe <laughs> me about, if you don't believe me about. Okay, playing the game is one thing, but if you really want to learn the cool stuff, be sure to check out the speedrun guides. Umu's channel has commentated guides for all four Shovel Knight campaigns. They go through every room and every boss and all the levels. Just follow along and you'll be speedrunning in no time. If you ever have questions or need help with something, just go to the dedicated speedrunning Discord. Not every game is lucky to have a speedrunning community this responsive. Even the developers have gone out of their way to make things better for speedrunners. Um, they passed bubble wrap? Wait, what? Really? Have you done bubble wrap? No, no I have I, I heard about it. Why? No. They did not uh, take it out. If you do it, it's faster. Oh. They made it so that you get teleported, and then while they were at it, they put in that sound effect. So now it feels like an actual like feature. It feels yeah. like now it's a secret instead of uh. Yes, it's not a glitch. It's a secret. So now is the part of the video where I tell you to stop watching and start playing Shovel Knight. Seriously. Go do it. You heard me. Still here? Really? Huh. You're the kind of person that just likes to watch stuff, huh? Well, just for you, I've put links in the description to some entertaining speedruns that you should watch. Hopefully those will get you more interested in buying the game. Thank you for listening to my dissertation on the time dependence of the transition in states of King Knight. Any questions?